Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can apply calculus to engineering problems. Now, specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at differential calculus, and in the next video, we're going to be looking at integral calculus. But before we look at an example, let's discuss briefly what we mean by differential calculus and integral calculus. When we differentiate a function, or find the derivative of that function, what it enables us to do is to find the gradient at a given point. So if we look at our graph in the top left hand corner, we have a graph of time against displacement, or t versus s. And this would represent an oscillating spring where there's damping involved. So we see that the amplitude of the oscillations decreases with time. Now if we wanted to find the velocity at any given point, then we could do that, because velocity is the same as the rate of change of displacement, or ds by dt. And that will be represented on our graph as the gradient. Gradient is change in y over change in x. But we don't have an xy graph here. What we have is a ts graph. Therefore, the gradient is change in s over change in t. If we wanted to find the gradient when t equals 1.5 seconds, then at a time of 1.5 seconds, we would need to find the gradient, and that would represent the velocity at that given point. And finally, we might want to find the velocity at a time of 2.2 seconds, which would be the gradient somewhere around here. The other type of calculus is integral calculus, or integration, and integration is used to find the area under a graph. Now, if we look at our graph here, and we wanted to find the area in this section here, then we could use integration to find that. But more importantly, what it represents in this case is the two variables multiplied together. So integration would give us s times time. And we'll look more specifically at that in the next tutorial. So in this video, we're focusing on differentiation. And what we're going to find is the velocity of this particle at a time of 1.5 seconds. So the first step of this is to identify what it's actually asking for. It's asking for the velocity at a time of 1.5 seconds, and we have a distance time graph. Well, velocity is distance divided by time. And as that relates to our function, that's the change in distance, ds, over the change in time, dt. So we know that we need to differentiate our function. So over on the right hand side, we're trying to find ds by dt, which is the derivative, and that's found by differentiating the function. And then we can input our value of time t equals 1.5 in order to determine the velocity at a time of 1.5 seconds. So in order to differentiate this function, first of all, what we need to know is that we have a function of t times a function of t. So we know that we're going to need to use the product rule. Now when we use the product rule, we assign a letter to each of these terms or each of these expressions, and the first term or the first expression I'm going to call u, and the second term or expression I'm going to call v. So u equals minus 3e to the minus 0.5t, and v equals sine 5.5t. In the bridging courses, you were shown how to differentiate exponential and trigonometric functions, but in order to differentiate u with respect to t, and to find du by dt, we need to multiply the coefficient at the front by the coefficient of t, so we have minus a half times minus three, well, a minus times a minus is a plus, so that will give us 1.5e to the minus 0.5t. The power remains the same in this case. And we're also going to differentiate v with respect to t, or dv by dt. Now, when we differentiate sine, it becomes cos. But what we also need to do is multiply through by the coefficient of t inside the brackets. So we'll end up with 5.5 cos 5.5t. .5 5 
Now, when we use the product rule for differentiation, we're going to end up with two terms. We're going to end up with one term, which is u dv dt. And we're going to end up with a second term, which is v du dt. So let's write our full differential out below. We have ds by dt equals u dv dt plus v du dt. Therefore, ds by dt equals u. Well, u is minus 3e to the minus a half t. And dv dt is 5.5 cos 5.5t and to that we need to add v du dt well v is sine 5.5t and du dt is 1.5 e to the minus 0.5t we can simplify this a little bit so we get ds by dt equals and the way that we're going to simplify this is by combining these two coefficients so we've got minus 3 times 5.5 which is minus 16.5 e to the minus 0.5t cos 5.5t plus and we'll use the same format. We're going to bring the exponential to the front. So we get 1.5e to the minus a half t sine 5.5t. So we have quite a complicated looking derivative there because we've had to use the product rule and we had both exponential and sine functions. So to finish this, all we need to do is input our time t of 1.5 seconds in. Let's relate this to the graph. We're looking at the gradient somewhere around here. We're going to find the gradient or the velocity at this point. So I'm going to keep this as two expressions and I'm going to input t here of 1.5 and t here of 1.5. So in my calculator, I'm typing minus 16.5 exponential open brackets minus 0 0.5 times 1.5, close brackets. And then I have times cos of open brackets, 5.5 times 1.5, close brackets. So that first term there equals 3.007 to three decimal places. Now to that, I'm going to add the solution to 1.5 e to the power of minus a half t sine 5.5 t and I'm replacing the t with 1.5 here and the t with 1.5 here. So in my calculators I have 1.5 exponential open brackets minus 0.5 times 1.5 close brackets times sine open brackets 5.5 times 1.5 close brackets. And for that, I get 0 0.654 to three decimal places. Therefore, the gradient at a time of t equal to 1.5 seconds is 3.661. And that represents the velocity of this particle at a time of t equal to 1.5 seconds.